chocolate and churros and marshmallows and and then I'm moving him into my back house until he tests negative and he can fly. He sent me a list of foods that he wanted for groceries and they were lentil soup, mac and cheese. Now imagine you have COVID and you're sending someone to the store. You would think you might get water or orange juice. Pedialyte. Please stop. That's your, you're done now for your contract. Every time I look at you doesn't mean I want you to talk. Thank you. Uh, but you would think you, you, you would get water, vitamin D, vitamin C, whatever. Uh, nobody gets Pedialyte. I don't know. Who gets Pedialyte? People that want to be rehydrated? From a COVID? I've never heard anyone get Pedialyte. That's like something drunks take when they're fucked up all night, right? I don't know. It's, if, if you're really dehydrated, I've heard that's like the, the trick. It's for like people Pedialyte. that are on Molly all night. I think the next day, if they're drunk. I haven't heard of like Pedialyte for the COVID, but um, listen to this list of groceries. Lentil soup, which is probably an accident. Mac and cheese. Invite people to your uh, place of residence for the holiday. And you can see the COVID. This is what happens. Colin Powell said to George W. Bush about Iraq, if you break it, you own it. I broke it, now I own it. I own them now. They are my responsibility until they test negative. Which is happening with uh, a lot of different people. When people come to your house, you think you're going to be there uh, in 12 hours. Positive, now you gotta figure something out. You gotta put them in a room or an attic or a basement. You gotta put them in a paddock. You gotta lock them outside in a kennel until they test negative. Which could be seven, eight, nine, ten, God help us, fifteen days. I mean, we really hope that they test negative sooner rather than later. But until that, I have, uh, they'll be eating macaroni and cheese. That is a list of food if you, if you didn't want to heal from COVID, if you wanted to just get COVID, you would eat that food. That would be the food you eat. Uh, macaroni and cheese, peanut butter and jelly, penne pasta, jar sauce. I like that he specified jar sauce. Otherwise, I would have been cooking. I thought, oh, I'll make, I'll make a sauce for that. Hopefully they're doing well. They have uh, very mild symptoms. Just a head cold. They're vaccinated. Um, but you know now it's, uh, it's I got uh, I got it. Everybody uh, it's uh, really sick. It's the final wave of uh, the COVID. You know, God willing, and uh, everybody's got it. Ben's wife, but she had it, but she might not have. Everybody uh, has this, or everybody's at least panicked with the idea that they they may have it. Now, the real most interesting people, the people that have not gotten it yet, the people that are two years into the pandemic and have not gotten it yet, they're either immune or for whatever reason. I mean, those people are walking around completely panicked that at any moment, their time is going to be up. I don't know how you haven't gotten it up until now, but Ben was one of those people. Ben was one of those people um, that didn't get it, and he just got it. This is the wave where people that haven't gotten it are going to get it. This is the highly transmissible one. So even if you're like Ben and you do so little... 
and you're usually on a golf course, or you, you do very little. Even someone like him, who barely works, can get it. You, you gotta imagine if he can get it, if Ben can get it, anyone can get it. If Ben can get it, a toothless hermit who lives in a ramshackle old cabin by the lake can get it, because they do the same amount. So if Ben is unsafe from this, that means anyone can get I mean, any human being engaged in any level of effort, any level of work can pick this up. Walk across the street by mistake, you can get it. So now, of course, it was mild uh, for most people. It was not mild for you. It was you got really sick. You were very sick, right? Yes, I was. Yeah, and, and how long were you? And, and you're uh, you're not fat. No, and I take my vitamins. And you take your vitamins, but it can still make you sick. Yes. And you you were at home uh, being sick while I was on the road, earning. Why well, I, I may have had Delta. You may have had the other variant. That's right. Perhaps we don't know. Or you had the Omicron, and you were just kind of playing it up. That's possible, yeah. You were maybe playing it up a little bit. I wasn't, but it's a possible. A little I, I bit could be you lying. might have been playing it up, I think. Because Ray Kump, who is 800 pounds, is doing relatively fine. He can type out, get me mac and cheese. But you, who are svelte and in good shape, were like moaning and crying and like rolling all around on the floor. Don't you, aren't you slightly ashamed of that? Raymond is soldiering through being the fattest person either one of us have ever met in real life. And you, a relatively in great shape person, completely fell apart. Are you not a little ashamed at that? Yeah, it's, it's messing with my head a little bit. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Odd. But this is what happens this is what happens, uh, I think, sometimes when we allow ourselves to not uh, think of our mission and our purpose, right? And instead of thinking of our mission and our purpose, this program, uh, all the things we try to accomplish and do, you decide to go and get sick during the final days of the tour, a tour that you had complained about and you had been very upset about because it was very hard for you to like take planes. You would talk about how hard it is to get on the plane. And then, would they, did they ask you to fly any of the planes? No, right? It was just primarily, well, you would sit on the plane and you, you didn't like it. It was very hard for you. All the adoring fans and the people who would come to you and say, well, it was very hard for you. So it was odd that in the last few days of the tour, you just crapped out. I'm raising my hand. Yeah. May I suggest something? No, you're 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 free to speak. Perhaps. Now, I'm judging this because Ray has COVID, right? And tested positive. That like, is true. Like me. And when you tested positive, you tested a very faint line. She said, I, I was sitting there in the mm -hmm. kitchen. No, no, no. I was sitting there in the kitchen, and Joe Rogan's witch doctor, QAnon nurse, came over, and you tested a very faint line mm -hmm. that was almost on the edge of you not having. Yes. That is correct. Okay, so. Now go on with what you're going to say. Okay, so I wasn't feeling that bad at the moment. I didn't right. get any sleep, but I was sweating, but I was right. like, I'm pretty sure I have COVID, right? Right. So now Raymond is over here day two, day three. He's fine. But what, what happened with me is I got the Regeneron immediately, and then I started feeling it. So maybe the Regeneron is what made me sick. Perhaps, or... Do you want to hear my theory? Okay. Do you want to hear my theory? Sure. I believe you had been complaining to your wife. No, I truly believe this. I believe you had been complaining okay. to your wife that you had to work. Mm -hmm. Because... We know that you, the bane of your... Okay, why are you raising your hand again? <laughs> I have not even advanced my theory. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, because... They, no, I, I, I'm, I'm dead serious. There's... Something's up. 
<coughs> something's up, and we need to figure out what it is because this seems. Now you almost did it again, where you said your wife was sick, and then but then you finally came back. But like you did it, you were trying to do it again. Went and stay in Abilene, Texas. With I my don't wife? know, but you were, you were cooking something up no, again. No. You were, and everyone knows it, and the fans will know it. No. They'll hear it in your voice. What were you saying? Okay, stop raising your hand. You freak. What were you saying now? What I'm saying Will is... Will you be... Uh, can I Can I ask for your honesty? Yes. Can I ask for your honesty? For yes. the love of God, yes. can you please just be honest for Christ and not continue to obfuscate, continue to lie, continue to, um, you know, basically completely... And utterly disrespect <laughs> myself in this program and the fans. But what were you going to say? Well, if I had a positive test, why would I play up being really sick while you're gone? Because all I need would be a positive test. That's my ace in the hole. And then I wouldn't have to go on the last three days. Your test was barely positive. Truly. I don't know what you cooked up with that witch before I got there. Your test was barely <laughs> positive. And then you decided to have a throw a pity party for yourself for an entire week where you threw a big pity party. And then you got your wife in on it. And when you went to the, the in-laws for fried biscuits or whatever they were going to serve you, you then tried to pitch her that she should take the fall for a week. So you two didn't have to come back and you didn't have to do any work. Now, I know that, you're, that this is some kind of ridiculous statement, but it's very odd that Ray Cump, okay? Ray Cump, who weighs as much as a Chevy Tahoe. It truly, not a Suburban, but at least a Tahoe. More than a Traverse. He, more than an Equinox. Yes. He is doing uh, doing this doing well. And Ben Avery, a lanky person, was unable to handle this. I'm just throwing it out there. Hey, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. I'm just, I'm just saying that we see you and what you believe and who you are. Better help. Online counseling. It's very important that everybody get their mental health straight. Especially now, we've lived through this crazy time. Everyone's lost it. You gotta find it. BetterHelp is great. What else, Ben? Is there something interfering with your happiness? Yes, you. Or preventing you from achieving your goals? You and your wife. Well, BetterHelp will assess your needs. Will and they kill you and your wife? No, 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 no. What will they do? They'll just assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. And you can start communicating just in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. I love it. There's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. Everything's online. Get it happen. Mm -hmm. Make it happen. Well, the service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your account. And if you don't like your counsel, you can switch and get another one. Mm -hmm. It's not a big deal. I also like the immediacy of it because sometimes you don't feel like going to therapy even though you have a scheduled appointment. That's right. And this way, if you feel bad, just shoot them a message. It's so essential. Mm -hmm. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors as needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. To together, we can visit betterhelp.com yes. slash Tim D. Tim D. That's better H-E-L-P. And join the over 1 million people that take join charge us. of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp, they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. So many more are coming. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And That's Tim right. show listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Tim D. That's right. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Tim D. Adam McKay's new movie, Don't Look Up, Getting Panned. Why don't people like it? It's about climate change. Adam McKay, the brilliant comedic director of things like Step Brothers and Anchorman, no longer wants to make stand-up comedy. He said making movies about white guys in suits doesn't feel right. 
because those white guys in suits have ruined the world. So he doesn't want to laugh at that anymore. This is uh, from Adam McKay. I'm paraphrasing, but that's pretty much what he said. So now he wants to make films about important, uh, impactful issues like climate change. The problem is a lot of people don't think it's good. Now, I don't know how many people, you know, I just know that he's got Leonardo DiCaprio in it, right? Uh, you also have uh, Jonah Hill. He's got Jonah Hill, Meryl Streep. Mm -hmm. He's got a great cast. Mm -hmm. The problem is they say it's a little heavy-handed, I guess, in the, uh, the messaging. Yes. I haven't got to see it yet, but it's, it seems to be getting it's panned not by not that good. Yeah. Well, nothing's going to be good when it's uh, about an ideology rather than a story, uh, if it's a movie. I, I mean, ideologies aren't necessarily designed to be movies. So even if they're correct, even if they're the right one, um, it's, it's probably not going to be that good. Vice was not good. He's actually not good at this. He's good at making those movies about silly white guys in suits because he is a silly white guy in a suit. What he's not is this, like, you know, um, he's not Francis Ford Coppola. He's not. And I don't care. I mean, I, I, I don't care. He's never going to do anything with me anyway. But, he, he, you know, he made The Big Short. And that was fun. But that was the edge of what he could do. Like, that was as serious as he could do it. And he had Margot Robbie in a tub explaining like credit default swaps like it wasn't that serious but he's a genius and it, what he's done with comedy is amazing he's left his stamp him and will farrell on comedy um but this stuff that he's doing now that he wants to do because he wants the emmys he wants the awards the articles it's not going to be good and a lot of people uh you know have been kind of saying that have the critics yeah, I got Roger Ebert's website right here. What did he say? What did Roger Ebert say? Well, he's since passed away, but I believe Nick Allen is, like, running it now. He's like, Oh, there. good. But I forgot that Roger Ebert died. They're carrying on the spirit Did he Roger. died of COVID last week with you? Is that what happened to Roger Ebert? He got COVID at the end of the tour? And he had to lay in a bathtub for seven days? It's almost irrelevant that this is McKay's worst film yet. Because there's something far more maddening about the promise of, the potential, and the importance that Don't Look Up foists upon itself. This is, of course, about global warming and how we're not doing enough about it. A funny premise for a star-studded comedy with disturbing stakes. But McKay has filled this parable with hot air, wanting us to marvel at and then choke on its mediocre jokes. So Nick Allen's sort of ripping it to shreds there. From what I've heard, it's just not funny. Which, right. which you don't want to... That's the last thing you want when making a comedy. Is someone to say it's, it's not a comedy. Well, I don't think he wants to be funny. Oh, interesting. I mean, this is the point. Is that he doesn't want to be funny. Comedy is no longer about being funny. It's about having people go, yeah, you're right about that. So I don't think Adam McKay is disturbed by that. I mean, maybe he is. But, I mean, this is a dude who said, I don't want to make any comedies anymore. I want to make the type of comedy that uh, people in, in, in my circle will like. My circle of polite multimillionaires who will then say, oh, that's so important. Such an important issue. Thank you. And, you know, that seems to be what he wants to do. So he's accomplished that. He did it. It's not for you anymore, dummy. They hate you. They don't want you to laugh at what they do. They don't think you're a human being. They don't value you. They don't think you should own a car. They don't think you should be able to drive anywhere. They don't believe you should choose your job. They don't believe you should have free speech. They don't believe you should be allowed to go on the internet and say what you want to say. They barely believe you should be able to vote. Um, yeah, and, and they don't care that you like their movie on top of that. And icing on the cake, they don't care if you think they're funny anymore. Does not matter to them. That, that ship has sailed. You were lucky. They don't want you to have custody of your own children. They don't give a fuck if you like their movie. Truly, Seth Rogen doesn't care if you like 
Uh, w what did they just make? Abor Santa. Uh, abortion, Mrs. Claus, Santa whatever Inc. it is. What is it called? Santa Inc. Santa Inc. Right about Sarah Silverman, blackface Sarah, who was very funny at one point. Uh, but is now spends uh, all her time on a podcast apologizing to random people because she said the n-word in 2004 why don't you go why don't you go help someone that needs help instead of sitting on your podcast and apologizing it, it, this is self-serving shit here so everyone that I grew up liking has become cringe and it's it's really truly disgusting and the answer is not to make like you know Ben Shapiro Charlie Kirk uh, fantasies about, you know, uh, female uh, snipers killing school shooters. Yeah. No, that movie's good, Tim. You don't really get, yeah, fuck you. Maybe it is good. I don't care. That's not the answer either. The answer isn't to get a bunch of, a bunch of conservative psychopaths together to make uh, right-wing movies either, okay? But, yeah, they don't give a shit if you like their movie. That shouldn't shock you. Nobody cares. It's not about, like, it's not about like being uh, funny. It's about, or it, it's about pissing people off and making other people happy, which is should be the essence of comedy. But when it's when it's strictly about politics all the fucking time, and there's no other element that anybody thinks about when they make something. Everything will suck. Things will be bad. Comedy is the gray area. Comedy should live in the area that is not explicitly defined by who somebody voted for. There are deeper things about the human experience that we can convey besides who somebody voted for. It's silly now. And, um... Yeah, but, you know, good luck. Good luck, everyone. I, I hope that you enjoy it, and maybe it is good. Maybe I'll love it. Maybe I'll love it. What if I like it? And then tell everyone to fuck off. I want to talk about this story. A bodybuilder killed his parents in Long Island in a $3 million home. I love where I grew up so much, and I have so much pride in it. And that's why I get upset with Ben when he lies about COVID because I've taken him to the greatest place he'll ever be, Long Island, New York. And I've allowed him to meet these people. I've acted as a tour guide and showed him the promised land. A uh, bodybuilder in New York killed his parents. He shot them on Christmas morning. It's a Long Island Christmas story. A bodybuilder who had a little roid rage shot both of his parents in the face on Christmas morning. Do you have the story, Ben? Yes, his name Tell is Dino. <laughs> his name was Dino? <laughs> Tell the people about Dino and his final act. He didn't kill himself. He's still around. I believe, yeah, he was arrested, so... This is a 29-year-old bodybuilder from Brooklyn, according to cops in a report. Pumped up Dino Tomasetti. Dino! Is accused of shooting his 65-year-old father in the back and 64-year-old mother in the head. Dino! At their Tony Hewlett Harbor home, just after 10 a.m. Merry Christmas, Dino! Hewlett Harbor's a nice area of uh, Long Island. Mm -hmm. I like that area a lot. $3 million house. 3.2. 3.2. And so now daddy got it in the back and he shot mommy in the head? Mm -hmm. That's right. So then. What's the that song? Uh, Santa got run over by a reindeer? Mm -hmm. Or grandma got run over by Is a reindeer? Is that it? Yeah. Yes, that's the song. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. It's like, how does it go? Oh, I'll play it for you right now. Play it. Dino, baby. Uh, so there's a lot of iterations. Let me, uh, I think this is a good one.
Dino shot his mommy in the head. Then he shot Papa in the back. They were having fun at Hewlett Harbor, where everyone is Jewish, no one's black. That's just demographics. Dino said, I'm upset. And he shot his parents right in the head. Merry Christmas. It's fun. And you saw a trail of blood. And on those heated kitchen floors, you saw a trail of blood. All right. I feel bad. Do we know why he did this? Uh, so let's see. He fled to New Jersey. There's one thing I've learned mm -hmm. about family is that it can be trying. I mean, really. I'm never advocating killing your parents. Here's what I'm saying. Family in general, especially during the holidays, Ben, mm -hmm. can be trying. Yes. Right? Yes. Now, is it so trying that you would shoot your mother in the head on Christmas morning? <laughs> You'd hope not. Right? Sure. But I don't know. So, where did did he flee after this? Yes, he fled. I'm trying to figure out. Uh, it it doesn't seem that we have a motive. Come yet. to Austin, Texas, Dino. Come right down here to Austin, Texas. We got your back. Supposedly, Dino and the mother were best friends. Is what I'm reading. It's, it's everybody is shocked by this news. The mother owned a dance studio, stars on Broadway and Lindbrook. Hmm. A woman outside of Dino's building in East Williamsburg who identified herself as his best friend told the Post that he's definitely not a violent person. I mean, he looks very violent. In Long Island, when people say they're not a violent person, it means they're incredibly violent. I know people that's been said about, and that usually means uh, they're uh, incredibly violent. He's not a violent person. You know, he'd get in fights here and there. Occasionally, he's been arrested a few times. Mm -hmm. You know, battery, small time, B and E. He broke into his ex girlfriend's apartment once, smashed your head through the wall. But you know, he's not a violent guy. You know, we came home a few times. He had a gang war in the street. Just a bunch of people beating each other with chains and bats. But he's not really a violent guy. I feel bad. I don't want to make fun of this horror. Well, but I, I have some good news. The parents are alive. They're in critical. Wait condition. a minute. Hold on. Hey, I smell a Hallmark Christmas movie. I smell a miracle. Ben, I can't believe you buried the lead because I here I thought the story was going to be sad. I thought it was going to be irredeemably tragic. But now Benjamin Avery, our honest producer, is telling us the the parents are not dead. They're not dead. They're uh, the father is in the most serious uh, condition right now, but neither uh, parent has died as of the current moment. Mom was shot in the head, mm -hmm. and dad in the back. Dad was shot in the back. In the back. Mm -hmm. But nobody's dead, right? No, and and the police have not released a motive for the shootings, no, nor have they updated the public yet on the condition of the victims. So there's a chance. That next year, next Christmas, they're all sitting at a table, eating dinner mm -hmm. with Dino, mom and dad, in the house, after he's gotten psychiatric help, mm -hmm. right? Yes. But I think they'll still put him in jail for this, even if the parents don't press charges. So here's here's something interesting, Tim. This is an interesting uh, little side note. I don't want to chase rabbits with this story, but it says... What? You don't want to what? Chase rabbits. You mean go down a rabbit hole? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of making a ma Matrix refer reference, I guess. We just You're saw Matrix You're making a Matrix reference. Yeah. Why? Because I don't, I don't want to, like, veer off into the into the uh, the weeds here. I'm, I'm trying to stay on the story. But, but why would you say chase rabbits is that not an expression to to you it's a rabbit hole you go down a rabbit hole okay that's fair you sound crazy <laughs> i was just listening to the matrix soundtrack on the way here i don't know why you made me see that the other <laughs> night it's fucking horrible 
So it says here, a 2006 New York Times profile detailed how Dino Sr. was once indicted for allegedly illegally paying off union brass throughout the span of a decade. Federal prosecutors had also linked him to organized crime figures. Now, is this significant? It could be. Or is this everybody in Long Island? They, they have links to That is also guys. true. Hmm. Here are the three things about this story. Everybody on Long Island's a criminal. Everybody on Long Island has paid off somebody. Mm-hmm. And everybody on Long Island's kid wants to shoot him in the head. Do you see? Yeah. So we've got three definites. Everybody's a corrupt, and everybody has a kid. Listen, I, I love my family. All of my friends love their family. I, I can count. On my two hands, the times I've seriously thought about murdering both of my parents, like started to make a plan. Now, most people I know have felt the same way. I don't mean it's a passing thought. I mean, considering killing both of them and fleeing and actually planning it out in my head. I've done that about seven or eight times. Most people I know on Long Island have done exactly that, where they've planned out how they would kill their parents and they would get away with it. Now, maybe that's something people where you grew up don't do, but it's kind of a rite of passage. It's sort of coming of age. If you can't fantasize about beating your parents bloody with a bat, I used to fantasize about beating my parents bloody with a metal bat. To the point where there was so much blood going down their faces, you couldn't even see who was who. They were so bloody. And I always thought about it around the holidays. I don't know why. Maybe it's because it was easier to get both of them in the same place. My point is this. It's not rare to want to shoot your mother in the face on Christmas morning where I come from. It is not rare... To want to shoot Pop Pop in the back where I come from. Maybe other parts of the country, they don't feel like that. But in Long Island, if you want to be a man, eventually you got to shoot your father in the back. Now, some people don't do it. Of course. They don't have the money. They're not confident. Maybe they never grow up. But I'll tell you one thing about Dino Jr., the bodybuilder. He's no joke, you know? Now, here's the thing about Long Island. The parents on either side of that house, they're going to be well-behaved. They're going to be well-behaved. If this was as shocking as people say it was... That means that there's other families in that area that are like, fuck, it could happen to anybody. Anybody could get it at any time. Now, this woman ran a dance school. I do not want to be... I'm not even trying to make light of this. It is my shitty job. Occasionally, I may say some things that are... Uh, But it is a story that I'm fascinated by because I wish to God, I pray, I truly wish I I, I had the strength to kill my parents, but I didn't because I'm weak. I'll admit that to the people listening. I'm weak. I never killed them. They slept in separate bedrooms. I'd have to cap one and cap the other. It was a whole thing. Do they do a, a, if she survives, and we hope she does, does the dance school do a number to, for her, to celebrate her life? What's it called in Limbrook Stars? Limbrook uh, Stars with a Z, yeah. Yeah, well, there are no stars in Limbrook, but perhaps... They will do the right thing, which is honor this woman's legacy with a dance 
number. And the number will be to honor her life. You know, which we hope she still has. And I'm just saying, I hope that happens sooner rather than later. The dad and the grandfather have a pretty uh, sketchy record here. What do you mean? <clears throat> well, the dad and the grandfather... Am I going to get shot for talking about this? this seems Why don't to... you protect me? We could always edit it out later, but it says the dad and grandfather were arrested for operating an illegal waste site next to their company's Brooklyn headquarters in 97, and that year that company pleaded guilty to filing fake documents related to a project at Elmhurst Hospital Center in Queens. Uh, it said they had a 2.5 million contract to build concrete decking for a new wing at the hospital and had secretly and illegally subcontracted the work to a second company for 1.4 million, enabling them to collect a $1 million profit, the Times reported. The scheme came to light after they failed to pay the second company. Wow. Yeah, they're criminals. In the same article, the Atler reported that the company was indicted for racketeering in 1987 for bribing local officials to let them illegally dump construction waste in Jersey. They eventually got off when they paid a $25,000 fine. So Nobody deserves to get shot in the face on Christmas. I don't care what they did. You're telling me their own son whacked them? How do we know that little Dino did it? Uh, the police arrested him because he was, he was fleeing the scene, but I... I you make a good point here. We don't have any video. Maybe he was going to work out. Did they ever think about that? No, I'm dead serious. Maybe little Dino was stressed out and he wanted to go work out. Well, we have his Instagram here, right? So here's... Do we? Let's get into his head a little bit Let's here. get into his head. Okay, so of course it's... Hey! I'm... I'm Dino. You're in my fucking head now. Fucking traffic. So it's a photo. Ugh. Here's We submit this to the court here. This is the picture of him sitting in the car, kind of looking ahead with his watch. Yeah. And the caption says, don't bleed on someone who didn't cut you. And then he has the prayer hands and then the 100. And then he says, dinner to the aftermath. Much appreciated. Much respect. Hashtag thank you. Hashtag New York City. Hashtag New York. Hashtag stay focused, hashtag fitness, hashtag fashion, hashtag blessed, hashtag grateful. I don't think he did it. I don't think he did it. I want to come out and support him right now. I don't believe he did it. He's being framed. I'm dead serious. I, I think he's being framed by a gangland uh, connection. Okay. I believe he's being framed. Hashtag blessed. I don't think he did it.
the Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan podcast by night, all day. Cheers, sir. Dude, uh, happy yeah. New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Yeah. Very nice to officially meet yeah, you. Yeah, that's cool. Hmm. Oh, I follow you on the Instagram. Watch your oh, posts yeah, yeah. all the time. Okay, good. Yeah, like I follow silly you too. Goose, you're having a good time. Yes, <laughs> I've been doing these uh, these little um, in, uh, what do you call it? We kind of reenact a scene from movies, and it's been really fun. It's hard because you have to you have to like know the scene really well. So I've done like the planes, trains, and all. You know, my fucking mm-hmm. car, my fucking. Um, so it's been fun. That's my new little uh, gig. But yeah, I try to keep it fun. Instagram. No, you uh, definitely do. And you're obviously, you've done a lot of radio because you have one ear I, on, you one ear that? off. That's, Jim Norton <laughs> that always does that. I'm just retarded. No, I, I do this in per- <laughs> Jim Norton does that too? Yeah. A yeah. lot of people do that. I've done know, a lot like, of radio. I, yeah, I've done a lot. Yeah, so yeah I like they want like a little, little Yeah, a little bit of, noise. yeah, a little, exactly. I don't exactly. understand I, that. Look, but... He's looking at me like, <laughs> put your headset up. Yeah, we've uh, been doing comedy for so fucking long and that we've never met. It's kind and, of funny. That is bizarre. I mean, you've been doing it. Um, 30 was, plus years? Yeah, yeah, same. I started in 1985. Yeah, I started in 88, so I had to reach out. All right, I got my three. Dude, you, I'm the veteran here. Fuck. Um, <laughs> you're a funny guy, man, and you take oh, you, you at least used to take a lot of shit. And I, I, I never understood I it. Never un- I never understood I don't either. I never have understood that. But it's mellowed out a little bit. It's kind of like, you know, you've done it so long. You're, yeah. you're kind of like, okay, you can go to the barbecue now. You're part of the club. <laughs> but um, for years and years, I mean, uh, from, from the very, very beginning, which is kind of funny, you being a comic, when I started in Florida, um, one thing everybody worried about was, uh, was you know, fever. You know, you want to yeah. steal, you know. I stole his act, so I thought, you know, not only did I do my my thing just because I wanted to do props but I thought wow no one's gonna hate me because I'm doing I'm not doing anyone's I mean I'm you know stealing crime watch signs and shit right so, and lugging them around the country so if anything they would say you know okay he's not funny or he's, at least he's original but he's not funny but they would say oh no he's you know everything they, I just got I would get shit for uh, like I was the shit I was just filling the punchline just yeah you were you were a whipping top. boy yeah you know what it's like you're like the it's like Nickelback for whatever Nickelback takes so much shit, it's yeah. like someone decides that that's a good punchline, you know, whether right, it's Carrot right. Top And I've or seen Nickelback. Nickelback, and they put on a pretty amazing show. They've got some good songs, and man. And they do. They're pop songs, yeah, but so fucking what? It's and like you, they're not hurting anybody. It was, you know, so, so let's say I would do a show, and we have a you know nice crowd. It was great. It was standing ovation. We get on the bus, and we're driving to wherever next gig, and we're all watching, uh, you know, the TV and then boom there's a carrot top rip and I'd be like you know what the fuck we just <laughs> I just not only we just did a great show we had a whole bunch of people laughing yeah so this one guy is telling me you know that I said whatever you know I've always been a guy that uh, considered the source I mean I was always picked on as a kid but when I'd come home my mom would you know what happened now the guy picked on me who was it and I was this guy well consider the source right yeah so it's always been that with, with comedy too like when you know George Carlin said I was funny that that negated every every asshole that said I sucked. I yeah. was like George Carlin thought I was funny, so that no, you, know, you I are funny, think, you man. Know, so you, you kind of good show. Well, you kind of want. I think most humans want everyone to love them, right? I yeah. Mean, so we're all, but as comics, I mean, we're we're even more sensitive. We want. I want. I want not only to have fans. But I want my peers to like me as well, so it's yes. weird. And then people say, "Well, who gives a shit of you know, you know, you have fans that love you. Who cares about?" Your peers, I'm like, well, you kind of want other comics to go, hey, man, I dig your style, you know? No, for sure. That's the thing. If you're rejected by your peers, if uh, even if the rest of the world loves you, but comics hate you, right? It's horrible. Yeah, it's been like I said, I've kind of, I've, I've done it so long. I guess they're finally like, ah, fuck it, he can stay. I guess. Well, I think first of all, you 